Well, today is day two uh, of our daily devotionals walking through Holy Week. Uh, it's Tuesday, and we're going to look at a couple of things that would have happened on this day uh, in the life of Jesus and in Jesus' closest followers. We're going to look first at Luke 22, verses 1 through 6. This is the passage that talks about the plot to kill Jesus. Now the feast of unleavened bread, called the Passover, was approaching. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. So Judas, the disciple that we love to hate. Uh, a parallel passage to the Luke narrative is found in Matthew. and Matthew tells the story of Jesus' ministry on Tuesday that included a woman anointing Jesus with costly perfume by Judas's plot, followed by Judas' plot and betrayal of Judas. You, you can find that in Matthew chapter 26. Now, we don't know why Judas Judas betrayed Jesus. Some speculate that he allowed his love of money to interfere with his love of Jesus and Jesus' ministry. Uh, uh, John's very open about his views of Judas as he writes his gospel. You can kind of get a glimpse of it just in, in John chapter 12. But others speculate that, that Judas was, he truly believed Jesus was the Messiah, but like the Sanhedrin, he misunderstood what it meant that Jesus was the Messiah. As a zealot, Judas Iscariot would have been looking for a Messiah to be a military leader. Uh, he, he would have remembered the stories of Judas Maccabeus, uh, who overthrew the Greek Empire and took back the throne of the people of Israel during the Maccabean Revolt from 167 to 160 B.C., uh, this re revolt resulted in a, a time that was called the Hasmonean Dynasty. It, it lasted into the 60 B.C.s when the Romans came in and, and took over, uh, and Israel became a client state of Rome. Uh, this was the last period in history that the historic Israelites ruled themselves in their own kingdom. And the zealots, of which Judas Iscariot belonged, longed for another revolt that would result in a Jewish king. And one theory that I've heard is that Judas was trying to push Jesus to revolt against the occupying force of Rome. And, and as I've and it seen during the arrest of Jesus uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane on Thursday night, all Jesus would have had to do was say the word. And his followers would have revolted and followed him into battle against the Herodian leaders and against Rome. Yet, even on the night of Jesus' arrest, he did not revolt. Instead, he healed where an act of combat had caused harm, and he called for peace. Now, we don't know what was going on in Judas' mind when he agreed to betray Jesus. We could speculate, but we don't know. We can read what's available from the, the Gospel of Judas, which was actually discredited as early as 180 A.D. And we could speculate that Judas was a confidant on Jesus, of Jesus in his journey toward the cross, but we do not know for sure. Uh, what we know is that Judas went to the authorities and offered to betray Jesus. We know that Judas was paid 30 pieces of silver, likely the Tyrrhenian shekel, or, or the half shekel. That's what this is, if you can see it. It's also known as the, the temple tax coin. Uh, it's a silver coin that they used to pay their tax when they would come to the temple. Uh, you can read about that in Matthew 26. And we know that Judas regretted what he had done and tried to re return the coins to the authorities. When they refused to accept the coins, he threw them into the temple and left to hang himself. 
Not knowing for sure why Judas did what he did leads me to ask myself, what would I have done? Jesus has been clear about his mission in Jerusalem, and yet the disciples have stepped in the way of that mission over and over. Peter was so forceful in his refusal to accept Jesus' fate that he actually physically took Jesus aside and scolded him. And that led to uh, Jesus' uh, Jesus' famous rebuke of Peter, get behind me, Satan. And as we look at the disciples, we see many that attempted to keep Jesus from fulfilling his mission of the cross. And without Judas, we, we have to ask, how would Jesus have been betrayed? So I ask myself, would I be Judas, who allowed myself to be used for the advancing of God's kingdom? Or would I be one of the other disciples who attempted to stand in the way of God's kingdom? Would I be the one who allowed others to come to know Jesus as the Christ? Or would I be one that interfered with God's plan, trying to make God's plan fit my plan? The only other option comes from a third image on that day. One image that was not of the disciples who claimed to be for Jesus, and yet contradicted the mission of the cross. Uh, one example that was not a betrayer of the trust of Jesus and his follower, one person that gives us a third way, a third option, an option of worship. Matthew 26, verses 6 through 13, describes a woman coming into Simon the leper's house while Jesus is visiting and, and breaking open an alabaster jar of expensive perfume. Contrasted with the love of money that seen, uh, seems to be G Judas's motive, we find a woman who does not spare expense in worshiping her Lord. She has poured out an offering upon Jesus. And rather than be caught up in the argument of who betrayed who, or who was in the will of God, this unnamed woman becomes the most beautiful example of worship we have on that historic Tuesday. She gave, and, her, and in her example, we see the example of Jesus, who by the end of the week will have given his life for this woman, for his betrayers, for his deserters, and for you and for me. Let's pray. Holy God, we cannot imagine the journey that you took on that final week of your life. We can read bits and pieces, but we have no clue. We don't know if we would be more like Judas who betrayed you or like Peter who denied you. I would hope I would be like this woman who worshipped you. But today, we can choose to worship you. We can choose to live our lives seeking to be more and more like you each and every day. All this we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.